In the 1950s, television had no African Americans on any show. Even after that, between 1955 and 1986, only 6% of the characters on TV were African American and 89% were white. Though there are blacks in TV shows today, is the racism factor still around in different ways? It could be, but people just don't notice it because it comes so naturally. Is it bad that something like this almost all people just look at like it's normal? In order to determine this question, we have to begin at the most basic of things. How and why are the different races separated in media roles? To start out, think of a non-reality TV show. Anything. Now when you have it, think of all the different races in that show, and think of how many of each race there are. For example, the most non-reality TV show watched in the United States as of 2013 is HBO's Game of Thrones. After doing a little research, I literally found no non-European slash non-American cast members on any part of the show. Now, of course, it can have its reasons why it doesn't have any, but does not excuse the fact that they choose to have a cast strongly of only white actors. Given this fact, many people, I predict of all races, continue to watch the show even though it completely excludes any other race having any part in the production. The most watched show in America, a multiracial country, is a show with only white actors. If not convinced by just one show, look at the next three most watched non-reality TV shows in America. AMC's The Walking Dead, CBS's NCIS, and ABC's Modern Family. If you combine the major cast members of all three of these shows together, the ratio of whites to all other races combined is approximately 7 to 1. That means each show has a significantly higher percentage of whites to other races. Now, a 7 to 1 ratio is obviously better than the absolute zero non white races of the 1950s, but it is still a pretty terrible and biased statistic. Though it is getting better and it shows at least some hope about what is possible for the future, it's still not perfected. It's not just the majority of whites in the shows that's flawed, but also the roles of all the characters of all races. In almost all the popular TV shows on television, a white man can play anybody from being a villain to a hero. They could be the protagonist or even the antagonist, but bring in another race. Almost always does the other race have a lesser role as a backup character, sidekick, or villain. And in almost every show, the cast structure is the same. For example, in police procedural dramas, the main group consists of five to six people. The main person in charge of everything. This person is usually white. Their personality can change around and can have different attitudes about things, usually different between shows. Then you have your so-called nerd, who is also usually white. Now, he could be cool or just working in the office, or actually in the action. He's quite a flexible character, and you can change him around to do different things. After that, you have your attractive female cops, usually two or three of these, also normally white. These characters don't usually play a big part and are just kind of there. However, they can also be changed in that they can be the sweet, innocent, stereotypical, girly type, or the complete opposite of that. Then you have your black cop. He never really changes no matter what the show you watch. He's always the same role. The strong, tough, burly-figured man who has much attitude and usually is on the front lines acting as backup. In every show, this is always the same, never really changing. This is the stereotypical role for a black man on a TV action drama. Again, similar to the top shows, this is just generally accepted. This rule is also the same for other genres of shows. In comedies, the African-American man is usually the grumpy, no-fun one, and in shows involving fantasy and action, the African-American man is usually the villain. It's all around in television, but people don't notice it, because they just accept it like everyday life. As you can see, the different races are segregated very uniquely in shows. But is this really the only way that they can be separated and different from white people in television? If you look at racism on the much more broad scale of television, there are many other ways that races are segregated. Another is simply just the types of shows on air, the channels they're on, or the kind of shows there are. If you were to scroll through your basic cable channels, most likely you would notice some non-major TV network channels. Unlike CBS, NBC, or ABC, these channels usually run specific TV shows or genres, such as old shows, black and white, music channels, or religious channels. The list goes on and on. In this list, you may come across some Hispanic channels, which are mainly for Spanish speakers, but nevertheless still racially segregates this channel from the others. But besides this, there is also often an African American channel. This channel is around because on the major TV networks, you will most likely never see a black protagonist main character. So, they make this channel to have shows with different races of characters. It is rather unpopular and has shows consisting of only an all-black cast. Most of them you've probably never heard of because the majority of Americans don't take interest in these type of shows. Shows like The Parkers or Soul Train. 
The most popular African-American show is The Cosby Show. This show starred Bill Cosby and his upper-class African-American family living in New York. This show actually got very good ratings. One big reason could be because it was one of the only shows with an all-black cast ever aired on a major network. First pitched to ABC and rejected, NBC decided to air the successful sitcom on their network. This was a big accomplishment for the TV industry to show an all-black TV show on a major network. It was a first, but also a last. After eight years, the Cosby show was canceled, not after winning many awards, though. Right there. <laughs> Today, you can see many repeats of the show on the so-called African-American channel, but it would not nearly get as much attention as it did in its prime on NBC. Sure, other variables may be contributing to why these shows don't get as many views as major networks, but the most common reason is that shows with other races are just not the highest preference for the majority of white Americans. Instead, it is white Americans themselves. So we can confirm that in the television industry, most networks and TV shows are rather biased and prefer Europeans or Americans over other races. This occurs in all different forms. But is the racism factor only in TV? The answer is no. Racism in media is everywhere. It's all around us. It's in advertisements, it's in video games, it's everywhere. If media is in our everyday lives, then racism plays a part in our everyday lives as well. The fact is, though, it isn't noticed. It comes naturally to people. In the end, people just accept it as normal.